When I turned 39, I was so frustrated, I could no longer afford my own body. My back pain, which began as an injury at age 18, was now constant and spreading to my neck, my left shoulder, my right knee, and even the bunion on my big toe. I wanted a massage every day, but could only justify paying for it once a month. I'd already invested in a decade of weekly Pilates classes to build core strength and yoga classes to restore flexibility, which was slowly eroding away. And yet, my relief from body work was only temporary. In fact, not only was my pain getting worse, but I was also beginning to lose range of motion in my ailing joints. My shoulder had gotten so bad, I could no longer take my shirt off with my left arm. It hurt too much to make this motion. At a holiday party, my aunt offered her assessment. In Mandarin, she said, we call what you have wu shi jian. What? Are you saying I have 50-year-old shoulder when I'm only 39? <laughs> I was stunned. If I was this broken at 39, how was I going to feel when I was actually 50? So now, on a mission to find pain relief and avoid shoulder surgery, I kept searching and found myself in a sitting class. How ridiculous to have to relearn how to sit, I thought. But at this point, I was ready to try anything. The teacher placed us in a specific sitting position and kept on teaching. As I sat, my quadriceps, the muscles in the front of my thighs, began to pulse. The next thing I knew, my quadriceps were slowly relaxing. Could it be? There was no pain, just a peaceful surrender of tension. It felt miraculous. I was doing nothing, just sitting there, and muscles that normally required painful massage to relax, they were quietly relaxing on their own and my back was feeling better. It felt like magic. The teacher would then coax my spine into specific positions for my tension and pains and would melt away with each breath. I found relief and lightness I never even dreamed possible. I had to understand what was happening. I needed more of this magic. Thus began my explorations into spinefulness. It's based on the work of Noelle Perez Christians. She's a Parisian who spent her life decoding what BKS Iyengar, the famous yogi master, meant when he said, put your spine on the axis. On the axis, our bones bear our body weight and our muscles move our bone by contracting and releasing. The muscular skeletal system works in balance and harmony. But when we move off the axis, our muscles contract to protect and compensate for inefficient alignments, it begins to take on some of the job of the bone. If the spine remains off the axis, these muscles continue to tighten to the point where they can even feel like bone, rock hard to the touch. This is the source of many of our inflexibilities. I used to think my inflexible hamstring was the result of unlucky genetics. But as I discovered, as I practiced mindfulness, I discovered that inflexibility is the extraordinary effort of our muscles desperately contracting to protect our joints and hold us together. These overworked, exhausted muscles then force joints to move in unnatural ways, eventually damaging them, which would compound pain and can sometimes lead to surgery. With so much at stake, you may wonder how and why we go off the axis in the first place. Here's one of our biggest culprits our so-called good posture. Directions include variations of tuck your tail, lift your chest, suck in your stomach, shoulders back. <laughs> these, each of these directions is a contraction that takes my spine off the axis. And how long are we supposed to hold these contractions? Forever, right? No, it's no wonder why we love to hate good posture. It's unsustainable. And I don't know about you, but I was so exhausted by it, I often found myself like this. In both these positions, my spine is off the axis, creating tension. Without any intervention, this tension becomes chronic and then can lead to inflexibility and then pain. So, 
here is the intervention. This is me finding my axis. As I eliminate tensions that move my spine out of alignment, muscular skeletal balance is restored. My bones spare my body weight, and my muscles are ready to move me. Some people think a relaxed look is slumpy, but actually, being on the axis, as you see here, this is what true relaxation looks like. So let's take a look at a man who sits all day long, pain-free and relaxed, because he's on an axis. Notice how nicely elongated his spine is, even though he has gray hair and sits and, a work, and works at a loom all day. People who have no back pain rarely bend along their spines. Bending along your spine takes you off your axis, which is how we sit. Yeah, notice the differences. Look at the pelvis position. If the man at the loom who's on the axis had a tail, it'd be free to wag. <laughs> we, more typically, will sit on our tails, which directly bends and stresses our low backs. So the secret is, actually, to bend more deeply at our largest joint, our hip socket. When we bend more deeply here, it removes the stress-inducing kinks out of our spines and begins to restore our axis. Sitting recently has been blamed to cause, be a cause of back pain. But with spinefulness, sitting is restorative and healthy. So would you like to experience what it feels like to have your quadriceps on and off the axis? Go ahead and stand. Now we're going to take our hands, great, and put them on our quadriceps to feel if they feel hard or soft. If they feel hard, it's likely that your hip sockets and your quadriceps are off the axis. So now, just to make sure we're all on the same page and know what a rock-hard quadricep feels like, take your pelvis forward to move everything off the axis. We're going into a back bend. And um, you feel how the quadriceps harden? So they're hardening, they're contracting to protect our hip sockets. So now, to learn how to relax our quadriceps, go ahead and we're going to find our hip crease and go ahead and lift your knee to do that. And so, and put your fingers in the crease and then move it down about an inch below. So we're going to initiate movement with our hands, pushing the top of our legs back to initiate a deeper crease. And as you feel the, you'll feel the weight sink into your heels and stop pushing when you feel a stretch in the back of your leg. Now go ahead and feel your quadriceps. Do they feel softer? Great. Yeah. So go ahead and practice again. And I just want to make sure that when you go home and do this, that you'll always try and initiate movement with the hands in the beginning because we're so tight in our hips that if we actually contract our hips to move it, we're, we're actually working against ourselves. So go ahead and push with the top, with your hands, pushing your crease back. And again, check to see if your quads are relaxed. And when you feel the weight in your heels, go ahead and bend your knees to have a seat. Great. So we want to relax our, we want to have more relaxed quadriceps and a deeper crease so that when you sit, the quadriceps are relaxed, and then you have a really good chance of having your tail be able to wag when you're sitting. <laughs> so, so if you ever get a chance to watch a toddler sit down, copy them. Toddlers are our best examples of living on the axis. Once upon a time, we were toddlers and also living in alignment and sitting on alignment became natural for us. But life and patterns of tension got in the way. It takes time to release some of these patterns of tension, but it can be done and quickly integrated into daily life. My favorite place to practice is in my car. My students love learning how to transform their commute into a restorative and rejuvenating experience. So, as I approach my 50th birthday next year, I'm happy and very grateful to report that my back and joints feel way younger than they did in my 30s, and my pain has been gone for nearly a decade. And no matter what your age, you too can trade your back and joint pain for increased vitality, flexibility, and mobility by tapping into the magic of your axis. Thank you.